Sling and Things. Sup, y'all, and welcome to the tenth episode of Sling and Things, where today I shall be discussing a spooky movie full of frights and terrors. And, you know, I didn't used to watch horror movies or play horror video games or indulge in anything scary. For a long time, my mindset was, I don't like being terrified in real life. I don't like being disturbed or feeling like someone's going to pop out from my closet and attack me. That isn't fun, so why would I go out of my way to seek that sensation? It doesn't make sense. But the older I got, the more I began to appreciate horror movies because... They can be a good reset for your emotions. They can shock you out of your stupor. And in fact, I found that watching horror movies can be a really good remedy for writer's block. Because not only will being frightened supersede whatever other emotions you're feeling that might be getting in the way of your creativity, it will absolutely get your mind going. It'll play with your imagination and get you to think about things that you otherwise might not normally ever think about. And that can be just the sort of thing you need if you're in a creative rut and don't know how to get out of it. So, to all my fellow artists out there, the next time you get writer's block, or the next time you feel so burnt out by your project that nothing is coming to you and it feels like you'll never be able to add to it ever again, take some time off, distance yourself from your project, and go watch a scary movie. A good scary movie. And with any luck, after a couple days off, your natural creativity will kick in again, and you'll be back to writing or creating. This method has worked for me quite a few times, actually. And who knows? Maybe doing this will work for you, too. And if it doesn't, then, uh, <laughs> my bad. But, hey, no harm in throwing it out there. Anywho, I recently found myself in the mood to watch a horror movie. And I decided to dip into the seemingly endless list of films that I had yet to see, but wanted to to find the film that I'm reviewing today. It took over a decade for me to finally watch this. It just kept slipping through the cracks over and over and over again. But finally, at long last, it felt like the right time for me to see this thing. And so, to commemorate the 10th episode of the series, I watched and am now reviewing 1408 from the year 2007, which was directed by Mikhail Hofstrom, and which was based on a short story by Stephen King. The reason I wanted to see 1408, and the reason this movie kept clinging to the queue of stuff I wanted to see, is that it has a simple but interesting concept. It is about a man, played by John Cusack, who gets stuck in a haunted hotel room, and the hotel room is either evil or demonic or possessed, and is trying to kill him. Think of this as a miniature version of The Shining, where instead of an entire hotel being evil, it's one room in a hotel that's evil. And of course, the room in the hotel that's evil is room 1408, and that's the one that Cusack stays in. So, it's a horror film that's also a bottle film. And the genius of Stephen King isn't that he was able to think up concepts like this, because in theory, anyone could do that. Anyone could come up with the idea for a killer hotel room. The same way anyone could come up with the idea for a killer dog, or a killer cell phone, or a killer clown, or a killer car. The genius is that he was able to develop stories out of those concepts and to build characters and settings and limitations around them. That's infinitely harder to do. And that's one reason why he's one of the greatest writers of all time. Not just because of how prolific he was, but because of the commitment and attention to detail that he put into all of these ideas, that he had the creativity to flesh them out. And if this movie had the same concept but wasn't based on a Stephen King story it probably wouldn't have turned out as well. What I like about this movie is that it does a good job of selling us on why Cusack's character would want to stay in this particular hotel room. In 1408, Cusack plays a paranormal investigator who writes about haunted hotels for a living, but none of the hotels he's visited have ever actually been haunted, and so he's jaded and doesn't believe that ghosts or spirits or demons are real. And so... He decides to spend the night in room 1408 at a New York City hotel room because he's heard that it's haunted, even though the manager of that hotel, played by Samuel L. Jackson, pleads with him not to do it, telling him that they don't let anyone stay in that room anymore because no one has ever lasted an hour in it without dying or killing themselves. But Cusack, who's heard this shtick before and has stayed in 
a million supposedly haunted hotels, doesn't believe him, and goes up to room 1408 anyway, and locks himself in. And he very quickly discovers that the room is not as harmless as he expected it to be. Most of this film is Cusack talking into a tape recorder and narrating what he thinks is going on while crazy things are happening around him. There aren't many other characters in 1408. The only ones who appear for more than five minutes are the hotel manager, played by Jackson, and Cusack's wife in the film, who is played by Mary McCormick. Otherwise, this really is the John Cusack show, and he does a good job of portraying a rather prickly character who we still feel sympathy for and who we still want to come out of this alive. What I also liked about 1408 is that Cusack goes into survival mode really quickly. He realizes he made a mistake very early on, which made him more relatable to me. Sometimes you'll watch a horror movie where the main character is a skeptic and is like, Well, I don't believe in ghosts. There must be a logical explanation for all these crazy things that are happening. And even when it's totally obvious that supernatural spirits are real and that they're all in mortal danger, the main character is still like, well, sure, it's odd that the sky has turned red and half the townspeople have transformed inside out and are morphing into demons and growing horns, but well, that could mean anything. That could be the wind. Like, no, that doesn't happen in this movie. Cusack accepts the peril of a situation at the same time that we would, but by the time he tries to escape, he finds that it's already too late. Or is it? Dot, dot, dot. The movie is creepy, and it manages to be eerie without having a ton of jump scares or being too reliant on gore. The only real problem with the movie, besides the fact that Mary McCormick is given just horrible dialogue, is that it's too long. 1408 is an hour and 44 minutes long, when it really should have been an hour and a half long. Keep in mind, this was based on a short story. The premise of 1408 gets stretched a little thin. And so what happens is you get comfortable in this setting after a while. You get used to it. You start to accept what the limitations and the rules of this room are and what can happen and what can't happen. And so it stops being as creepy. The last 30 minutes of the movie aren't as frightening, aren't as shocking or unexpected as the previous 30 minutes. And the climax of this movie isn't terrible, the plot is solid enough that I was still hooked, but it's hard to watch the climax without also feeling like some of this could have been shaved off. There's one sequence in particular in the last third of this movie that either could have been dramatically shortened or could have been removed entirely, and you will know what I'm talking about if you see this movie. Also, 1408 has three alternate endings, which... I don't know how to feel about it. I tend to think that a movie should never have more than one alternate ending because, like, it leaves the impression that the director didn't know how to end their movie if they were willing to shoot four versions of it. But, I don't know. That said, I never lost interest in 1408, and there are some good, creepy moments in it. There are also some Nicolas Cage-esque freakout moments that are maybe unintentionally funny, but hey, that's part of the experience, too. If you're looking for a spook house horror movie that isn't heavy on gore and that's trying to freak you out mentally more than it's trying to gross you out with blood and guts, then this is a solid option. It was worth being on my watch list for as long as it was. And to go back to what I said earlier, if you have writer's block, if you're in a creative rut, who knows? 1408 might be just what you need. I'll tell you what 1408 reminds me of too. In 2014, Hideo Kojima made a demo for an upcoming Silent Hill game, and the demo was called PT for Playable Trailer. And in the demo, you walk around a haunted, possessed apartment as it gets creepier and creepier. The Silent Hill game that it was promoting wound up getting cancelled, but PT by itself was so frightening to players that it became a cult classic. And 1408 is kind of like the film equivalent of P.T., except that instead of wandering around an apartment, it's about someone wandering around a hotel room. And speaking of Hideo Kojima, he is the subject of the next video. It took a while, but in episode 11, I will at last be focusing on a video game that isn't Spider-Man. <laughs>